Hello my YouTuber friends and welcome, I have another video to share with you. But before we get started, can I get a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the video. At the end of the video you can check out how my friends and I are generating crypto commissions and stacking Bitcoin on a daily basis. Bitcoin is currently trading around $6,250. That's about all we're going to be getting from CoinMarketCap today because we're actually doing some long-term technical analysis. But there is one thing I want to show you and see how CoinMarketCap is saying that uh, the market capitalization of Bitcoin is around $107 billion. This is something that we need to go ahead and establish. This is something that is very important when we're doing our technical analysis. And this is what we're talking about. If we zoom in here to the month chart, we're going to see that Bitcoin had a double bottom down here around $100 billion. For the last three months or so, a little over two months since the beginning of May, Bitcoin has been trending downward, 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 downward. And every time it made a new low, the, the bulls tried to get a little reversal and they couldn't manage it. It kept going lower. But finally, we actually saw the bulls put their foot down. They put their hoof down and they said, no, Bitcoin is not going below $100 billion in market capitalization. We saw that happen twice here. Bitcoin double bottom down here. It's a very strong indicator that Bitcoin is not going to go below $100 billion. And that seems to be the absolute floor for Bitcoin, at least for the moment. That's a very important important thing to keep in mind when we're going forward. Okay, with that in mind, let's jump over here to the chart. On the day chart, I want to talk about something in relation to Bitcoin's price action. What we saw with Bitcoin's price action when it actually dropped down and hit $100 billion in market capitalization is we saw a breach of a very important level, which was $6,000. Now guys, $6,000 was a very important level because first of all, $6,000 is a big even. We've talked about big evens on the channel. It has three zeros in it. Therefore, it is a big even. A lot of people like to trade around these. Therefore, you normally see a lot of trading around those. Therefore, you would expect to see Bitcoin bottom out at $6,000 if it was going to bottom out in this region. But in fact, we actually had what I would consider a little false breakout here. We broke below $6,000, which again is a very important level. That was a previous bottom over here. That was an important level. We didn't like seeing Bitcoin go below that, but we did see Bitcoin go below that, but only for a time because it got support on $100, $100 billion in market capitalization. This looks like a false breakout to me. It looks like Bitcoin was trying to break $6,000. It was trying to go bearish, and at least for the time being, it's not able. The bulls finally put their foot down, and this looks to me like it would have been a reversal. Now, it looks like we've come down a little bit in the last couple of days. We've talked about how this could form into an inverse head and shoulders pattern on the channel. We're not getting into that today. The point is we saw a very, very distinct false breakout, in my opinion anyway. If Bitcoin were going to break $6,000 and it didn't get support down here and it continued down to $5,000, or somewhere below there, I might be a little bit more bearish, but it didn't do that. That's the first reason that I think that we're probably about to see a reversal is because Bitcoin had an opportunity to see a breakout, to see a, a bearish breakout, and it simply didn't happen. And now we're getting support here around $6,200. At least for the short term, I think that's a good sign. We've talked about a lot of other short term things, so we're going to let you, I'm going to let you guys go watch and browse the channel to see my other opinions on the short term. But if we come out here to the week chart, there's something else I want to talk about, and that would be the RSI. Now, guys, I talk about the RSI a lot because I've talked about in other videos. I don't really think a market itself has any very deeply ingrained intrinsic values. Like it's going to have, a, it's not going to have a natural instincts like a creature. A market is simply a manifestation of the trading done by traders and trading bots, and it's simply a manifestation of how people are moving the market with their capital. And with that in mind what you see is that all of the power of the market, all of the movement of a market comes from how people are trading the market. Now, that's one of those very simple concepts I think we all understood, but it's like a law in physics. It's something that needs to be stated so that you guys, can, or so that we can actually appreciate it and so that we can actually use it. With that said, I like to use technical indicators that try to uh, capture as much of that sentiment as possible, and the RSI is a good example of that. Let me go over what I'm saying because that was a little, uh, that was a little confusing. What I like to use in technical indicators is I like to use technical indicators that are used by a lot of trading volume. And a lot of trading volume uses the RSI. And since a lot of trading volume uses the RSI, the RSI is a very powerful indicator simply because a lot of people use it and a lot of people trade by it. Therefore, there's a lot of volume trading around the RSI. With that in mind, out here on the week chart, what we see in the RSI is that the RSI double bottom back over here around 30, which is historically on the day chart and on the week chart, a signal of a bottom in a market. And if we zoom back over here, We'll see that after uh, after Bitcoin bottomed out on the RSI here, about six months later, it started the run. You could consider right over here in September of 2015, the actual beginning of the run. But we were this was close because we saw Bitcoin trade sideways. This wasn't really a bear market. This was more of what I would call a stagnant market in this time. So we really saw the bottoms back over here. Now, what we're seeing in Bitcoin right now is we're seeing Bitcoin come back close to those levels. Now, granted, it's not going down to 30 on the RSI, and I don't necessarily think we're going to. 
let me just go over the worst case scenario for Bitcoin for a second. If Bitcoin's worst case scenario does happen, what I see happening is it dropping to five or $3,000. RSI coming down to 30 and then it's getting a bounce there. I don't think that's going to happen. My point right now is that Bitcoin has gone very, very low on the RSI compared to where it was in all of 2017. For all of 2017, Bitcoin never went below 55 on the RSI or really about 52 or 53 on the RSI. Right now it's down around 40 to 42 on the weekly RSI. That's a big deal. Another thing I want to take in, uh, another thing that I want to point out that may become important later is the 20 day exponential moving average or well in this case the 20 week exponential moving average excuse me the 20 interval exponential moving average this is this line that we have here on the chart and this is an important line if we look back here on the chart then we'll see there's a lot of trading around this exponential moving average we see a wicks come down here to get support on it here support here back over here you you guys can see how much support was on this market and in fact right here when we broke through it in september you could basically use this to define bitcoin's actual bull market this because there was so much support on this market, that's essentially what kind of defined when Bitcoin was in a bull market. That kind of defined the actual trajectory of the market. And right now, it's coming down to meet us. It's getting very much, it's getting a lot closer to us. It's around $7,700 right now. If that continues to come down, Bitcoin continues to go sideways or go up, and we see a breach of that, I think the third time is going to be the charm because we've broken it twice. We saw two kind of false breakouts here. If we break it a third time, based on what we've seen in 2017, and we can stay above it, we break above it, get support on it, and then continue on a rally, that could be the actual formation. That could actually be the formation that leads us into a bull market. Let's go over here to the month chart, and I want to show you something else. On the week chart, we're not as far uh, retracted on the RSI as we are on the week chart, but on the monthly chart, we actually are very, very close to it. As you can see back over here, the RSI actually bottomed out around the same time, kind of when it was going in this little six-month stagnant period that I talked about. It bottomed out around 50 on the RSI. Right now, we're getting very close to that. Bitcoin's around 53 on the RSI, which would lead me to believe that on the monthly time frame anyway, we're very, very close to the kind of, uh, the kind of, uh, we're very close to the, the uh, <laughs> we're very close to the bull run that started in 2015. That's what I was trying to say. Goodness. I think that we're very close to the bottom. That's the word I was looking for based on what we saw in 2015. Another thing that we have to look at here on the monthly chart is the actual 20 day or the 20 month exponential moving average. Again, as we can see, this is also an important exponential moving average. Right around the same time in uh, 2015, once we got above that, that was right around the time that the bull market started. And right now, we haven't even got, we haven't even broken it. So there are definitely some people that say Bitcoin's not even in a bear market yet because we haven't broken this when Bitcoin was in a bear market back over here because it was below this 20-day exponential moving average. With that said, since we are trading right down here around this 20-day exponential moving average, since it's flattening out, and since I think $6,000 or at least $5,750, the $100 billion market capitalization point we talked about earlier is holding, if we can hold that and we hold the 20-day exponential moving average, we have a very strong floor of support under us that I think is going to allow us to continue on a rally or continue to be propelled upwards. I'm not going to necessarily put a price target on this, but I think Bitcoin could easily see $10,000 in the next three months, and I think it could very easily see some predictions put forth by Thomas Lee at Fundstrat. With that said, I think we've wrapped up what we want to talk about on the chart here. Let's go ahead over to some news. This isn't news, but this was something that came up in the news about a week ago, if I'm not mistaken. It was a little over a week ago. You guys may be familiar with a fellow named Thomas Lee. Thomas Lee has been in financial markets for a very long time, since the early nine or since the mid '90s, I believe. He founded Fundstrat, which is actually basically it, it, well, it's an investment company. They do they do uh, advice and other things. And this guy knows what he's talking about. He made a lot of very accurate predictions in 2017. And he is predicting, even after Bitcoin retraced all the way to $6,000, that Bitcoin is going to continue to go to uh, $25,000 by the end of the year. Now, guys, you've probably heard about that. But what I don't think you've heard is what I'm going to say about this. And that is that there are so many people in the cryptocurrency space, and there are so many people, especially in the mainstream media, that think that Bitcoin is just doomed. There are so many people that don't have any idea what they're talking about saying that Bitcoin is doomed. And you have the person that does know what he's talking about, like Thomas Lee, saying that he thinks Bitcoin is going to do very, very well. That ought to tell you something. A good place that you can see an example of this is on Bitcoin obituaries. We've been to this website a couple of times, 99bitcoins.com forward slash Bitcoin obituaries. This is a website that tracks every time that a news article says that Bitcoin is dead or that Bitcoin is about to die. And if you were to go back and look through the, I think, seven pages of Bitcoin obituaries here, every time the Bitcoin is 17, excuse me, pages of Bitcoin obituaries, what you would find is that most of the time these Bitcoin obituaries are coming out around the time that Bitcoin is in a very good buying opportunity. If we look back here on the chart, where did a lot of these obituaries come out? Right around here. When was a good time to buy Bitcoin? When it was going to run up to $20,000? Right around here. Right around there. 
See, it's not in the mainstream media's best interest to make correct predictions. It's in the mainstream media's best interest to get views. Because a lot of people are going to forget what the MSM said three months ago when they say that Bitcoin is dead. And then when, a Bitcoin, and then when Bitcoin's at $20,000 and everybody thinks that, Bitcoin, thinks that Bitcoin is going to continue, they're going to say, well, Bitcoin's going to continue because they're going to say what people want them to say. So you should be a contrarian when it comes to what the mainstream media is saying most of the times because it typically correlates with when there is a good time to buy. A lot of t You wouldn't have seen uh, the mainstream media saying that Bitcoin is dead like right around here. They would have said that, oh yeah, Bitcoin's doing great. You may have seen them saying it back here. That's a good thing to look at. If the mainstream media is saying something, a lot of the times, even, even, news are, even sites that are supposed to be financial uh, sites, a lot of the times they're not doing things for proper predictions. They're doing things for views. It's a business. That's just the way it works. So who you should be listening to are the people that do know what they're talking about. And Thomas Lee is a good example of someone who does know what he's talking about. And even though Bitcoin has continued to correct for the last couple of months, Thomas Lee is still very bullish. Now, guys, I'm not going to hold him to his predictions of $25,000 exactly. If Bitcoin doesn't hit $25,000 to the penny by midnight on twenty of uh, midnight, uh, December 31st, 2018, I'm not going to fault him. But I do believe that it's going to turn bullish, due in part to the fact that he thinks it's going to turn bullish because he has been doing this for far longer than I have. I, I kind of think I know what I'm talking about, but Thomas Lee most certainly knows what he's talking about. With that in mind, let's go over here and look at something, a, a little index that Fundstrat, which was co-founded by uh, Thomas Lee, put together. This is an interesting little index that they, that they uh, put together. It's called the Bitcoin Misery Index. And this is pretty funny. A lot of, th a lot of the times when the, when the actual mainstream media and when the media is saying that Bitcoin is dying, that correlates with a lot of misery in the market. And you guys have probably all seen that uh, bullish and bear markish, uh, <laughs> markish, bullish market, bullish market and bearish market uh, cycle. And, the, and it says uh, that the Bitcoin drops below the mean. It goes, people go into despair and misery, and then it comes back and it corrects. And that's when you need the correction. I'm sure you've all seen that chart. If you haven't, go look up despair or uh, bull market on the on Google. You'll find it. But a lot of the times when Bitcoin or whatever market continues to go lower, a good time to buy in that market is when everybody is freaking out and when everybody is miserable because that's normally the time that the market will actually turn around. And funnily enough, he made an, in well, Fundstrat made an index called the Bitcoin Misery Index, which actually kind of measures how miserable people are in the index. And as we can see here, um, when the Bitcoin misery index is at misery, in quotes, below 27, Bitcoin sees the best 12-month performance. A signal is generated about every year. We can see here on a little graph that they put together. Right now is one of the most miserable times in Bitcoin's history that we have seen in a very long time. Tell me in the comments section down below if you agree with me and if you agree with Funstrat that this is a very miserable time. But currently, the Bitcoin index is at 18.8. Unfortunately, I can't go open this because this is this is in their own system and I think you have to pay for that and I'm not going to. But they uh, they do believe that Bitcoin is probably going to be turning around due in part to the fact that it's so low on the Bitcoin misery index. We've talked about on the channel before and we talked about in this video how when people are very miserable in the market and when people are very bullish or very bearish on the market, that's typically a good sign to buy. Guys, if you were to go and trade a market based on what the mainstream media and what the general consensus of the market is and you did the exact opposite, more often than not, you would probably make money because what were people saying when Bitcoin was down here? When Bitcoin was going down, 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 down. What were people saying? They were saying that Bitcoin's dying. They were saying that Bitcoin's dead. Now's the time to sell all your Bitcoin. Get out of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a failure. Don't get into Bitcoin. Well, we can objectively say that they were wrong because Bitcoin went down to $200 and it 100 x in the span of three years. That's not even an opinion. They were objectively wrong in saying that you should get out of Bitcoin if they were using the presupposition that they wanted to actually make money. And I think everybody's in the market to make money. I don't know of a single person that's ever entered a market to lose money. The fact of the matter is a lot of the times when a lot of people that don't know what they're talking about are telling, and I'm not saying I always know what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I am definitely prone to making mistakes as is every single other human being on the face of the planet. But when you see a large group of people, a large herd of people, a large number of people saying that Bitcoin's going to die or that the cryptocurrency market is going to die when the fundamentals have been doing nothing but improving, you know you're probably close to a time to buy. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see how we are stacking Bitcoin even in a bear market, generating crypto commissions, and using signals, seize the day. Click on the link in the description area below.